Okay, so we were looking at, we were in the chapter on diagonalization, and we were looking at orthogonal diagonalization. We were about to do an actual example of orthogonally diagonalizing a matrix. Okay, so where is it? No. Here, orthogonally diagonalize this matrix A. Okay, so you can see it's symmetric, so it must be orthogonally diagonalizable. Um, now, they say we've worked with this matrix earlier, so our calculations then gave an, for the eigenvalue 8 in eigenspace with the vectors spanned by the vectors minus 1, 1, 0, and minus 1, 0, 1, and for the eigenvalue 11, the eigenspace spanned by the vector 1, 1, 1. So we need to produce an orthonormal set of three eigen, not vectors, values, like three eigenvectors. Okay. We know that the eigenspaces are orthogonal because that's because it's an orthogonal matrix, the eigenspaces are orthogonal. We have that as a theorem. So one of the eigenvectors we desire is simply this one. We know this one is orthogonal to those two because they're in different eigenspaces. We just need to, 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 to normalize it. We just have to divide it by its magnitude, which is divided by its norm, which is root 3. So what remains is to choose two orthogonal eigenvectors from E8. Okay, now I actually don't like how they set out or their, their, their procedure. I always can never remember exactly what to do, so I always sort of do it from first principles, so I'll do that instead of what they've done. So, we basically, we want to have a new, a new vector from, from the eigenspace, from this eigenspace, that is orthogonal to V1, okay? So, I'm calling, you know, I'm calling this one, I'm calling this one V1 and this one V2. Okay, so we want it to be orthogonal to V1, so that means we want its so it's like here, we want its linear common, we want its inner product with v1 to be 0, right? Sorry, hold on. We want its inner product with v1 to be 0. So whatever it is, we want its inner product with v1 to be 0. Okay? But it's from this eigenspace, right? So it's actually just a linear combination of v1 and v2, right? This new I think we're looking for, it's a linear combination of v1 and v2. So now this is, a, we could find it then by solving this equation for a and b. Actually, this equation doesn't uniquely define A and B because this gives us a linear combination from E, from this, uh, from the eigenspace E8, of any length. And we don't actually care about the length, right? With, at the moment, we're just looking for a vector that is orthogonal to V1, and we don't care how long it is because later on we're going to normalize it. So, instead of using A and B, let's just, let's use only A. Okay? And that will just be v2, okay? It's fine to do that because now, you know, you have this thing a1, you can find this vector here, right? And this can be scaled to any length by multiplying the whole thing by a b, right? So now we have an equation with just one free, one unknown, the a, which we can solve. So, of course, you start off by using the fact that um, the inner product is linear at least in its first argument, or at least with real vectors. So, ooh, not v2 there, so you have a, a, then v1 with v1, and then you have v2 with v1, okay? So what are these inner products? What is the inner product of v1 with itself? It's, you can have minus 1 times minus 1, which is 1, minus 1 times minus 1, which is 1, plus 1 times 1, which is 2, so you have 2 there. So this is 2a, and then you have v2 with v1, so you have minus 1 times minus 1, which is 1, and then you have 0 times 1, which is 0, plus 1 times 0, which is 0, so you just have minus 1, so you just have the 1, okay, 2a plus 1. Okay, so we have 0 equals 2a plus 1. So that means that a must equal minus a half, right? Okay. That's going to give us fractions. I don't particularly want fractions. So let's actually times our whole thing by 2. So let's the whole vector by 2. Because remember, it can be scaled by anything. So let's rather choose this vector. OK? So we have minus a half for the a. So this becomes like that. So we have minus v1. That's going to be 1 minus 1, 0. And then we have 2v2, so that'll be minus 2, 0, 2. You add those, what you get, you get 
minus 1, minus 1, 2. Okay, so this is a, a proposed vector that will be orthogonal, that will be in the eigenspace E8, but orthogonal to V1. So let's check that it really is orthogonal to V1. So to check that it's orthogonal, you of course, you take its inner product with V1. Okay. And what do you get? Ah, yes, you get 1 minus 1 plus 0, it's 0. Okay, so it is orthogonal. Um, and we know it's in E8 because it's, just, it's a linear combination of these two vectors from E8, so it's in E8. Okay, so we have an orth orth our orthogonal vector. Um, I'm just curiously see what, I'm just curious to see what they got for it, what vector they chose. Ah, they chose the same vector, minus 1, minus 1, 2. Cool. Okay. Um, so now we have a set of three mutually orthogonal eigenvectors. You know, they could have chosen something as a scalar multiple of this, but they're in. So we have these three mutually orthogonal eigenvectors, okay? Now we need to scale each of them by its norm, so we already remember how to do this, of course. This one we already actually did, you, you know. Each of them you divide by its norm, so, or times it by one over its norm. So you, this one divide by root three, this one, one, one squared plus one squared plus two squared, that's six, so you divide by root six. This one, one plus one, one squared plus one squared, so it's gonna be two, so you times it by one over root two. Okay, so there you go, you have these. And then those are gonna those eigenvectors form the columns of the your orthogonal matrix. So there, there, and there. Okay. The D, of course, is just as usual for diagonalization. It's just the diagonal matrix with the diagonal being the correct eigenvalues that correspond to the eigenvectors. And so we know that this must be the case, and we could check it if we wanted to. So maybe check it if you feel like it. Um, should I bother checking it? Yes, I'm going to check it. OK. So we should have found this, right? This should be the case for what we've got. Let's check it. OK. So the first thing is that Q could be written in a way that's more amenable to working with, because I could factorize out 1 over root 6. Okay, and then this first column we would have minus one of root three minus one minus root three root zero. Um, here we'd have minus one minus one two, and here you'd have root two root two root two, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm just trying to get rid of the fractions basically from Q. The next. A thing we need to know, remember, is what Q trans what Q inverse is. Well, Q inverse is actually Q transpose because remember this Q was. Uh, we found this Q was orthogonal, so it's inverse is transpose. Um, there's no need to check that. It'll if it really is true, it'll it'll work out. And if it isn't true, then it won't work out. Okay, so should I check it? Maybe I should check it as well. Well, anyway, the point is that its first row is the first column of Q, second row, second column of Q, third row third column of Q. Okay. So, uh, yeah, let me check this. So, the point is that Q, Q, Q transpose should equal the identity matrix. Okay. So, let's check it. So, you, the root set, one over root six is, that just comes one over six. And now, the first entry here, we're going to have, we're going to have what? We're going to have two times root three, two times root three, no, not two times root three, we have root 3 squared, so 3 plus root 3 squared, so 3, so we have 6. Okay, next next entry, um, we have uh, we have minus 3 plus 1 plus 2, yeah, 0. Uh, next entry, minus 2 plus 2, 0. Next entry, we have 3 plus 1, oh, mi minus 3 plus 1 plus 2, 0. Oops. <sighs> okay, next entry, we have... 3 plus 1 plus 2, 6. Next entry, we have 
0, minus 2, plus 2, 0. Okay, here we have here we have um, 0, minus 2, plus 2, 0. Here we have uh, 0, minus 2, plus 2, 0. Here we have 4, oh dear, oh no, we have 4 plus 2, 6, yes, cool. So of course that is identity, because you divide it. It times it by 1 over 6. Okay, so this Q, trans this Q transpose really is the inverse, this matrix really is orthogonal, or as well, we knew, we made it orthogonal. Uh, now we want to check that this, that when you did this, check that this multiplication does equal a diagonal matrix, the diagonal matrix D. Okay, so the first thing is that this Q inverse is actually Q transpose, right? So we actually want to go Q transpose times A times Q, okay? So we've got Q down written down there, and what was A again? A was Oh, it was nines on the diagonal, the ones elsewhere. Okay. So, first of all, let's do A times Q. Uh, so, Q transpose A, Q is going to equal Q transpose, and then we're going to do A times Q. Okay, so A times Q. Um, so, first of all, you know, you have the, the 1 over root 6, which I can just bring that out to the front. Okay, the one over root six from the Q, and now for this uh, A times Q, we have what? We have at the top. We have this first entry. We have minus nine times root three plus root three. So that's minus eight times root three. And then next entry is. minus 9, minus 1, plus 2, so that's 8. No, sorry, it's minus 8, minus 9, minus 1, plus 2. Then next we have 9 times root, nine times root 2, plus, what well, we have 11 times root 2, okay? In fact, you know, we have to, that's what we're going to have all the way down here. We're always going to have 11 root 2, okay? Um, then 1, 9, 1 with that first column, you get minus root 3 plus 9 root 3. Minus root 3 plus 9 root 3. So that's... Oh, that's 8 root 3. In fact, what's this entry here? Um, that's... To get that, you do... Wait a second, did I do this correctly? 8 times Q. Uh, 191 by... Yes, mine, okay. Then we have 1, 1, this entry here, go to 1, 1, 9 by that, so that's 0. And this entry in the middle here, that's 1, 9, 1 by that minus 1, minus 1, 2. So that's minus 1, minus 9, plus 2. So that's minus 8. Um, and then 1, 1, 9, A times Q. 119, that's 119 by minus 1, minus 1, 2, so that's minus 1, minus 1, plus, oh, plus 18. So it's minus 2 plus 18, so it's 16. Okay. So I want to times that by Q transpose. So you can bring out the Q transpose also has a 1 over six root six so that can come out in times by the other one over root six to give you one over six now we have to do q transpose times this matrix we get what so we first first row by first column you get what minus eight times three hmm, sorry first row of q transpose times first column of 
this matrix. So you get what you get 8 times 3 plus 8 times 3 that's it so that's like 6 times 8 which is what uh, 8, well, no, fine. 8 times 3 is 24, 48 what's 48 divided by 6 um, is it 8 8 times 6 yes ok cool so that's going to that's be right, that's going to give us the 8 we want. This 8. Okay. Uh, now, row 1 of you transpose by column 2 of this thing. So we have... Ah, oh, we have... Oh, sorry. We have... Minus root three. So we have so row this row, this column. We have eight root three minus eight root three. Cool, that's zero. Okay. Now that same row with this column. Yeah, that's zero. Um, now onto the second row with this first column. Yes, that's zero. Now the second row with the third column. You get eight plus eight plus two times sixteen. So sixteen plus two times sixteen to get three times sixteen which is 48 divided by 6 is 8 as you decide. Okay, that's that same second row with that third column. Yeah, you get you have minus 1, minus 1, 2, so that cancel out to 0. Now this third column with that, third, no, that third row with that first column, so you have, yes, you have 0. Those things cancel out. Next one, you have minus 8, minus 8, 16. Yes, you have 0. And finally, you get... 2 times 11 times 3, right? 3 times 2 times 11. 6 times 11, in other words. Okay, which of course then you divide by 6 to get 11. Yes, so we successfully orthogonally diagonalized this matrix and we checked that it worked. Okay.